All right, so this is not a video on how to play Batacon. This is some tips and tricks that I have picked up that I think are relevant on how to teach people to play Batacon. And that's a little bit different. Um, you know, there's plenty of, of other sources if you want to learn how to play. Uh, you can just read the rule book. There's also a couple of other uh, videos already online. They may not be for version 4 specifically, but the key parts are all going to be there. So one of the questions that actually gets asked a fair amount is, who should I use when I teach someone how to play Battlecon? And traditionally, move these out. Traditionally, the answer has usually been Schecter and Elidore. I don't love using Schecter and Elidor uh, when you're teaching someone how to play. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one, I don't love teaching people how to play with, you know, it says Slugger and Disruptor. Um, Schecter has a lot of guaranteed hits just due to her UA. And Elidor has a couple of weird mechanics that... I don't feel accurately represent all of Battlecon. However, if you're just looking to teach someone how to play, there is a good mirroring of these two. You know, one anti's tokens for stun guard, the other anti's tokens for priority. Fine. Well and good. And it'll teach you the basic concepts fairly well. Uh, that's not usually my favorite. And I've got something of a hot take here. Uh, so my favorite character to give to them to learn how to play, is Vana. Uh, Vana has a lot going on that I think is just really useful for teaching someone how to play. Uh, and you may have noticed uh, a pretty odd choice here is Elixis. If you have ever played against Elixis, you know uh, if she starts snowballing, she can feel very oppressive to play against. Luckily, we're not going to encounter that situation, and... The reason that she's oppressive is actually going to help us out a little bit. You don't have to use Lixis. There's a, there's a, you know, a few other great options here. Uh, mostly, I'm going to recommend Brawler Novice, right? Brawler Novice. Brawlers, in my opinion, are going to be the best way to start learning Battlecon. Unlike Elagor, unlike Schecter, which have kind of those specific niches they fall into. Um, you know, Kimby, Hikaru are also great. But let's start with Vana and Lexus. And in this example that we would be using, uh, the person who's teaching would be playing Lexus, and the person who's learning would be playing Vana. Uh, one of the reasons I like Vana so much is she has a couple of concepts that we're going to hint at as we're teaching someone how to play, but also. Scythe is just really easy, good to understand. Her ability is simple. Uh, it, she's not unpowerful. Right? She doesn't feel particularly bad. And if you've never seen uh, what Bana can kind of bring to the table, um, her unique base is just standard good, right? Uh, it doesn't really get much better than this, right? These are all great numbers on a unique base. And for what we'll be doing when we teach someone how to play, this is an easy out, right? This is a get-out-of-jail-free card almost. And that'll make more sense in a moment. The other reason that I like Vana, outside of her kind of easy-to-understand um, unique ability, right? Her uh, Divinity token, it, it'll be in your kit as Divine Rush, because that's what the old token was. Uh, gives her plus two, prior, uh, plus two power, plus two prio, and it cycles with her attack pair. Uh, really simple to understand, not, not super complicated, but also um, some of her styles and the way they interact, I think, work to illustrate the game super well. And the first one that we'll come to is actually possibly... Uh, the least useful for our teaching, which is going to be Judgment. Um, judgment has a minimum range. This is an important concept. Uh, it does have a cool, you know, the uh, reveal effect where they can't advance past you, they can't retreat. All that's well and good. In our test game, I don't think that this will be 
super great outside of the one of the specific reasons we have chosen Lixus is Lixus, Lixus has her uh, unique base lance, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So outside of Judgment, we have Paladin. Paladin's a fine style, right? Uh, it's got useful movement on it. It's got range. Uh, power's great, sure. Uh, negative 2 prio, uh, fine, but it has guard. Okay, great. It's just fine. Uh, Reaping's really good because it will also illustrate to the person that you're using how you can interact with tokens. And this is something that I don't like about the Schecter and Elevore pairing, is they both use tokens in the same way. What I like about, while I would recommend Lixis just because that's what I personally think, I don't think you can specifically go wrong by, say, using Hikaru instead. Hikaru uses com tokens in a completely different manner than Bana, while he's also still being a, a novice brother. Uh, and then we get to the, the part that I I really like about Bana and, and one of her strengths, right? If you have never seen Bana's kit, she has this style, which is glorious, and uh, it doesn't have range on it. It does have a before advance one, but it does have hit, active, if you're the active player, get plus three power. And when we combine that with Avenging, right, which outside of the guard and the, you know, advanced one has hit reactive player plus three power, you're able to show them in a meaningful way with the cards in their hands what a mix-up is, right? In a way that immediately sinks in. Because when they have the choice of playing one of these and they can do either one, this is what you're, you can really point out to them to say, See, this is the mix-up that you, uh, you know, the person oppose, or opposing them on the other side, that you are trying to take into consideration, right? Are you going to play the one that if you go first, you hit me harder? Or are you going to play the one that if I go first, you're going to hit me harder? Uh, this is just a, a great way to illustrate that, and it's in their kit. All right. So, while Lixus is ordinarily fairly oppressive one of the things that we're going to be doing here is you're going to play your first game as Lixus with your hand face up that sounds bizarre well because it is right you're going to play your attack pair face up and you're going to kind of explain what you're doing and I'm not going to sit here and, and give you a full breakdown on how to explain what's a start of beat, what's an end of beat, uh, how does active, reactive, what do you do about clashing. You know, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of teaching the rules itself. I feel like Battlecons actually, when you get right down to it, not that complicated just by the rule set. What I think is complicated, and I think one of the things that we want to do when we're teaching is we want to show why we like the game. And that's more important than just, here's what they do. So the reason that I, I suggest that you play with your hand face up is it changes the dynamic of what you're asking them to do. So if I play... Uh, as an example here, you know, if I play pruning, pruning lance is fine, pruning strike. What I'm really saying here is I want you, Vana, to go through your hand and I want you to pick a pair that's going to beat this. I don't want you to try to hit me, right? That's normal battle con. That's what happens... Ordinarily, when you teach someone this game, it's, hey, so I have to hit them, right? When you play with your hand face up, it's not about them just throwing out some random attack that looks strong, right? We'll have plenty of time to get to that portion of how do I attack you. But when you have to, when you are teaching them and you play with your hand face up, you're, you've changed what's going on here to part of the depth right, that, that we want to show, which is, this is not about you just attacking me. This is about you beating this attack pair that, that I'm going to play on you.
right? One of the, the key parts as well here is when you're doing this face up, I strongly recommend that you don't allow take backs. Uh, nothing teaches quite as well as making stupid mistakes, and we've all done it. Uh, I don't mind revealing that I think like my first three games of Battlecon, I don't think I bursted because no matter how many times I heard it, read it in the rule book, saw it happen from my opponent, I could not simply remember that start a beat would happen before I activated it. Regardless, that is a stupid mistake that new players make, right? I would, you know, don't don't bash on them if they make that mistake, but you want, you know, that failure, that, uh, that mistake is a great teaching tool. So, you're going to play the whole game with your hand face up. Uh, you're going to do your best to win, right? And the cool part about playing Lixis is if you can successfully get some hits in, Lixis specifically creates some scenarios where she's 100% to win, right? That's one of the reasons people can struggle against Lixis as they play a few more games. But when you want to reduce analysis paralysis in someone who has never seen this game before, right? Doesn't even have the five standard bases memorized. Removing some of those options in a way that isn't arbitrary, just because it's what Lixis abilities, what Lixis's ability is, which if you haven't seen it, it's pretty simple. Uh, when you hit them, they discard a base. Not only that, but Lixis has a lot of cool stuff on her styles that illustrate how a, a fighter's kit can break the game. And one of the fastest ways that you're going to show them that is actually with naturalizing. Uh, most of us uh, who have been playing the game for a long time are very aware of what the purpose of naturalizing is. Now, this naturalizing uh, did receive a change in, in version 4. I believe it's not quite as powerful as it used to be, uh, similar to Seraphina Silver. But the point being is, even if you're playing face up, you can present a scenario most likely with naturalizing where you are going to anti a force, you know, a token, and they're going to try to counter and only to realize they can't. And the reason that I like that is. I don't want to hold their hand too much when we're playing, right? I don't want them to know all of the tricks. The, the best teacher is that feeling of discovery on your own, right? Of that you find it out. It's why when we play with our hand face up, we're telling them you find out. And if they don't get it, we're letting it go off right? Naturalizing is going to do that. And keep in mind, they're going to have your reference card, and the the thing here is you don't want to show them the rest of your hand, right? You want them to get used to using these great reference cards and figuring out what they can do. And you can give a little push, but I wouldn't... I, you want them to start using these reference cards in, in a way that's going to help them in their future play. So, after you get through this game, which, you, look, you should lose, we want to talk about a few other things that you have this secret goal. Like, this is going to show them the depth in... You're not just choosing an attack to hit your opponent. You're choosing a way to, to win a beat or not lose a beat. Um, one of the things I, I really would want to make sure that I do is... If you were the teacher, you should preferably switch dodge uh, at least a few times until suddenly you don't. Um, switch dodge on, you know, on cooldown, right? It, you switch dodge, it comes up, you do it every time. Because you want them to see that dodging isn't bad, right? That dodging isn't the worst, and sometimes they're going to get you. But there's also the possibility that if you do it correctly, right, that you can engineer a situation where they figure out that clashing your dodge is what they want on their own. And that's not to say that clashing a dodge is always necessary, but that idea and that feeling of discovery when you realize that that's 
how you can beat a dodge is something that I, I think is worth talking about. So after the, you get through all kind of the, the meat and potatoes, right? The other parts are, so finisher. More than anything else, I would attempt to beat their finisher. There's a very strong possibility that you're just not going to be able to. I mean, it's a finisher, right? So once you get done with this game, which you've taught them it's more than just your attack, you need to take my attack into consideration. Um, hopefully, if, you're, if you've managed to get some hits in, uh, despite them having uh, you know your hand face up, uh, you can engineer your play so you can play knowing that they no longer have these bases. And keep in mind, you won't have forced that scenario. Um, it'll happen organically, and they can see that their choice to discard that base to Lixus's ability is what created the situation now, right? And that, that sense there, that's everything we're going for. When we go to game two, I, sh I would recommend keep the same characters. However, what I would suggest doing there is now you're going to play face up on round one, or they are, and you're going to alternate back and forth, right? So they're going to see your attack pair, but then when they have to do it, you know, they're going to play even something uh, pretty simple, right? Uh, they might have learned that going fast is really, really good. So maybe it's Reaping Grasp. And when you beat this, right, they can see with their... They can see it from your perspective as well, right? What beats my attack pair? What do I have to worry about? And you can go back and forth uh, in that game doing that, right? And then even more to that point, they're going to see the power of what Lixis can do. Uh, you'll be able to show them a couple of cool effects. Uh, I would mostly want to make sure that you just cover the bases about dodging, about counter anning priority. And the whole goal here is not to show them how to play Battle Con. With all kind of due respect, I, I think that how to play Battle Con isn't as complicated as it might seem initially. You're really trying to show them, and as someone who's never played fighting games uh, competitively, I, I can't really speak to this, but you're trying to show them why fighting games are good, right? The depth involved in the levels of, do I beat your attack pair, or do I try to beat the pair that would beat the attack pair you think I'm going to play? Uh, why is my positioning important? All these things are, are, are the amount of depth about that's why we love Battlecon, right? And even more so than teaching them timing windows or cool tricks like corner crossing. It's that level of depth that is going to keep them coming back. Anyway, that's how I did it. Uh, I, I hope something similar works for you. Um, some other good characters that I pulled out just to, to give you an example. Uh, I think Andrews and Hikaru are both fine. Hikaru can be a little tough. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't recommend somebody like Cadenza is because, you know, the the problems with Hikaru's hit confirm or Cadenza's hit confirm really come up. And in fact, if you look at, uh, outside of Schechter and Elgor, all these characters, the one thing that they have is a lot of hit confirm. And I really think that that's really useful at the beginning because it will also highlight later when they're looking at characters that don't have it that this is a genuine downfall. Anyway, I hope you all like that. Uh, can't think if I can think of anything else. Uh, nope, that's about it. I'll try to post a link um, to the any training videos to, for how to play, if that's what you're interested in, uh, down in the description. But yeah, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.